Byron Kamenick from Jack's Solar Garden. All right, when I say food, you say energy. Food, energy. food. Energy. When I say energy, you say food, energy, food. energy. Food. Now we've said the two words that this presentation is about, the fundamentals of agrivoltaics. So now I can get into it. So the United States has large swaths of land filled with agriculture. Plants need sunlight to grow. However, our society needs 100% renewable energy coming up in the future. So we have a tension building. There's the idea that solar panels will be able to coat our landscape, uh, rendering our soils completely useless and reducing and uh, lowering our agricultural output. Some solar developers have come up with the idea of calling this uh, a solar garden. So it's a, it's a nice idea of saying, hey guys, look over here. Isn't this a beautiful, lush area? Come have a picnic with me. Let's go. And I can't, I don't know about you, but I haven't seen a solar array yet that I want to go have a picnic under, but I'm damn well going to build one. So let me first talk about sunlight. So sunlight heads, hits down on vegetation, it gets it to grow. That's what we need to eat. Also, soil moisture is able to be retained in the soils. But if the sun hits the, the ground adjacent to the, if it hits the barren soil, uh, then it starts being reflected back up in the atmosphere, similar to the traditional methods for putting in solar gardens. Uh, they remove all the vegetation there, and this can create a heat island effect. Here's an example of one in Minnesota where the National Renewable Energy Laboratory has planted a whole wide variety of grasses. When the sunlight hits the grasses, evapotranspiration occurs, and that helps has a cooling effect on the solar panels. This cooling effect actually increases the efficiency of the solar panels. This shows you a little bit more of what's thermally happening there. So when you increase the, when you improve the efficiency of the solar panels, the researchers are seeing that you can get one to 3% extra solar uh, energy per panel. And plants also don't mind not having uh, the sun. I'm sure all of us have seen during the middle of the summertime that we have plants that are wilting outside. That's because their photosynthetic processes are shutting down. They're not able to handle that much sun. And so he, I wanted to show you what it looks like of growing crops underneath the panels. This is in Massachusetts. This is a line of green peppers happily growing underneath the partial shade of solar panels. This is real. This can happen. We have researchers working on this. University of Arizona released a paper at the beginning of September showing that tomatoes can grow twice as many fruit per plant and use half as much water to do it under solar panels. Jalapenos, they grow the same amount but use three times less water. That's important in a, a semi-arid climate like we have. And the co-location of agriculture with solar creates more financial security for farmers in the area. And that's something we need in, a, um, in this day and age. So uh, I wanted to show you a few different uh, examples of what this could be. One of them is in Germany where they had a potato field and they simply redesigned the solar panels so that they could continue having the same amount of potatoes and produce solar power. Um, in Japan, they're growing mushrooms underneath solar panels. The, so, the solar panels create a microclimate underneath of it where there's a higher humidity, plenty of shade, moderated temperatures. Now, Denver, please take note. Mushrooms can grow underneath solar panels. Important. <laughs> also, Massachusetts is uh, using livestock underneath the solar panels. They have cows that go underneath, hang out in the shade. They enjoy that. That uh, solar installation up uh, at IBM is going to run sheep underneath the panels. It's possible to do other things with it. At Jack Solar Garden, we are going to be the most innovative uh, agrivoltaic system in the country. We're partnering with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, CSU, University of Arizona, who are going to use our land to study growing crops underneath and around our solar panels. Our mission is to be one of education, teaching kids how we can do um, improved land use management of our, of our land, uh, <laughs> to be able to grow crops and power all in the same location. We're partnering with a local agricultural organization so that we can have a CSA underneath two acres of our panels. Uh, they'll be able to put food back into the community as well as teach agricultural workers the benefits of agrivoltaics. Uh, and, and everything that you've seen here, there's plenty of flowers. The birds and the bees love this. Audubon Society, the Rockies, is going to partner with us to plant uh, their largest pollinator habitat in Colorado around the perimeter of our solar array. Agrivoltaics is truly doing the most with our sun's energy. 
It's providing financial security for farmers. It's putting more renewable energy back into the grid, and it's putting food in our bellies. And Jack Solar Garden will be a national model for how uh, we can adopt it across the country. Thank you. Thank you.